Good afternoon, everybody. Thank God for another day among the land of the living. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the word and thank God for the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, the more we study Bible prophecy, the more we see how amazing and awesome our God is. You know, the fact, I don't know how anybody could not believe in a God, the creator of all things, but a God that literally tells us what's going to happen thousands of years ahead of time before it happens. And if you, if you study the Word of God and you look at Bible prophecy in the Word of God, you'll find out that God is batting a thousand. He has not missed one prophecy yet. Everything in the Word of God is true. So, you know, there's still things that have to happen. And one of those things that I want to talk about today, I want to share an article with you guys. It's a real fascinating article. It's about the Feast of Trumpets and the Rapture. And, you know, will the rapture, the resurrection and rapture, happen on a Feast of Trumpets? Could the rapture happen on this Feast of Trumpets in 2022? Um, you know, it's in, I believe it's in the uh, September 24th and 25th, I believe it is, 26th, right in that range, um, this year. So, many things are happening. When you look at the, the what's going on with the Temple Mount... Um, and you know, they want, they got everything prepared to get the temple rebuilt. When you look at the, the, they just said they want a, a fast, tr um, I don't know what they call it. One of those, a turbo train or a train that goes really, really fast. It's going to, they're going to build a, a train, have a train go from the airport to directly to the temple mount that's going to be rebuilt and that train is going to be ready to roll supposedly in April of next year, six or seven months away. They've got five perfect red. So far they just had five red heifers come in that are supposedly perfectly red. No, no discoloring at all. And, um, have they have not had labored or anything. So if they're in quarantine right now. And in 10 days, which will be on, I believe they say September 25th, um, just in time for Feast of Trumpets, if, I'm just saying, they want to, they're going to inspect those red heifers again. And if, if, if all goes well, they'll be ready up, to be ready to offer up a red heifer to, to burn that red heifer and have the ashes for the purification process, the cleansing process, to where the priest will be able to uh, make these animal sacrifices again. We know they're going to start making animal sacrifices. So, you know, everything in the Bible is lining up like crazy. But this article is dealing with Feast of Trumpets, and is it possible that the rapture could happen on Feast of Trumpets? So I want to read this article. It's a really good article. Hopefully it'll take 10 minutes or so, but... You know, pay attention because, look, God does things. Um, God is a God of order. And, you know, he's not a confusing God. He tells us what's going to happen before it happens. That way we will believe and know that God is real. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we serve an awesome God. And let's read about this here. Uh, the, the topic is... The, the title is, How Did Jesus Fulfill the Meaning of the Jewish Feast? And they kind of answer the questions in here. Could the rapture happen during the Feast of Trumpets? So here we go. Let's start out here. The way in which Jesus fulfilled the Jewish feast is a fascinating study. In the Hebrew Scriptures, the Jewish prophet Amos records that God declares he would do nothing without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets, Amos 3 and 7. And that's true. God reveals to the prophets what he's going to do before he does it. Okay, from the Old Covenant to the New, Genesis to Revelations, God provides picture after picture of his entire plan for mankind. And one of the most startling prophetic pictures is outlined for us in the Jewish feast. Let's see. 
of Leviticus 23. Okay. The Hebrew word for feast, moedim, literally means appointed times. God has carefully planned and orchestrated the timing and sequence of each of these seven feasts to reveal to us a special story. The seven annual feasts of Israel were spread over seven months of the Jewish calendar at set times appointed by God. They are still celebrated by observant Jews today, but, but for both Jews and non-Jews, I'm sorry, but but for both Jews and non-Jews who have placed their faith in Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, these special days demonstrate the work of redemption through God's Son. All right, here we go. The first four or seven feasts occurred during springtime. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and weeks. And they all have already been fulfilled by Christ in the New Testament. The final three holidays, trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and tabernacles, occur during the fall. All within a short 15-day period. Okay, so we've had four of the feasts so far in the spring. They've all been fulfilled. And they're going to go ahead and name these feasts and how they were fulfilled. Many Bible scholars and contemporary commentators, sorry, believe that these fall feasts have not yet been fulfilled by Jesus. However, the blessed hope, Titus 2.13, for all believers in Jesus Christ is that they most assuredly will be fulfilled. As the four spring feasts were fulfilled literally and right on the actual feast day, in connection with Christ's first coming, these three fall feasts it is believed by many will likely be fulfilled literally in connection to the Lord's second coming. In, in a nutshell, here is the prophetic significance of each of the seven Levitical feasts of Israel. Okay, here we go. Number one, Passover. Leviticus 23 and 5. Pointed to the Messiah as our Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, 5 and 7. Whose blood would be shed for our sins. Jesus was crucified during the time that the Passover was observed, Mark 14 and 12. Christ is a lamb without blemish or defect, 1 Peter 1, 19. Because his life was completely free from sin, Hebrews 4, 15. As the first Passover marked the Hebrews, as the first Passover marked the Hebrews released from Egyptian slavery, so the death of Christ marks our release from the slavery of sin amen we've been delivered from our sins by the blood of jesus romans 8 and 2 okay number two so the first feast was passover which jesus fulfilled when he shed his innocent blood and he was crucified he died for the sins of all mankind he was our passover lamb okay number two unleavened bread leviticus 23 and 6 pointed to the Messiah's sinless life, as leaven is a picture of sin in the Bible, making him the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Jesus' body was in the grave during the first days of the feast, like a kernel, this is really cool when you compare this, like a kernel of wheat planted and waiting to burst forth as the bread of life. Amen. Number three, first fruits, Leviticus 23.10, pointed to the Messiah's resurrection as the first fruits of the righteous. Jesus was resurrected on this very day, which is one of the reasons that Paul refers to him in 1 Corinthians 15.20 as the first fruits from the dead. And number four, this is the fourth and final one in order that have been fulfilled so far. It's weeks or Pentecost, Leviticus 23, 16. It occurred 50 days after the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread and pointed to the great harvest of souls and the gift of the Holy Spirit for both Jews and Gentiles who would be brought into the kingdom of God during the church age. See Acts 2. The church was actually established on his 
on this day when God poured out his Holy Spirit and 3,000 Jews responded to Peter's great sermon and his first pro proclamation of the gospel. Now, here's Feast of Trumpets. So we got the first four feasts that have been fulfilled in order. We had uh, first fruits, weeks, or Pentecost, and no, the first one, I'm sorry, the first one was Passover, then was unleavened bread, and then first fruits, and then weeks of Pentecost. Those four have been fulfilled already. Now when we look at the number five um, feast, and this is what we associate with the, the resurrection and rapture of the church. Le Leviticus 23, 24, the first of the fall feast. These are the ones we believe are yet to be fulfilled. The first of the fall feast. Many believe this day points to the rapture of the church when the Messiah Jesus will appear in heaven as he comes for his bride, the church. The rapture is always associated in Scripture with the blowing of a loud trumpet. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18 and 1 Corinthians 15 to 50 and 52. Okay, and then the sixth one is Day of Atonement and the seventh would be Tabernacles. Day of Atonement, let me read these two really fast. Day of Atonement, Leviticus 23, 27. Many believe this prophetically points to the day of the second coming of Jesus when he will return to earth. That will be the day of atonement for the Jewish remnant when they look upon him whom they have pierced, repent of their sins, and receive him as their Messiah. Zechariah 12 and 10, chapter 12, verse 10, and Romans chapter 11, 1 through 6, and 25 through 36 of verses. And number seven would be the tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles or Booths, Leviticus 23, 34. Many scholars believe that this feast day points to the Lord's promise that he will once again tabernacle, that means to dwell with us, with his people when he returns to reign over all the world, Micah 4, 1 through 7. Now, we have seven feasts of the Lord. I hope that didn't bore you guys, but my point is this. When you really get into this and you begin to study and different, you know, like the Jewish, I never would have studied these uh, five, ten years ago. But now, you know, the more, look, the scripture says to grow in grace and knowledge. We want to grow in the grace of God upon our life, but we want to grow in knowledge. And the more you study the Jewish history and you really get into it, um, the more that is revealed to you. These Jewish feasts, I believe they mean something. The first four have been fulfilled in order on the exact day of the feast. Passover was when Jesus shed his innocent blood. He was crucified. Unleavened bread was number two when he was he was buried. He laid in the grave or in the grave he was in the grave for two days. And on the third day uh, is first fruits when he resurrected. He was the first fruits. And so and then on on number four the feast of Pentecost was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Fifty days later, the church was, um, the Holy Spirit was poured out and the church was born. Amen. So the first four spring feasts have been fulfilled in order. Now, Feast of Trumpets is the fall. The fall feasts include Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement. So trumpets, it would be the resurrection and rapture. Day of Atonement would be um, judgment Day, when th those were going to be judged. Um, the great and terrible day of the Lord is coming. And it's going to be a great day for those who are born again and place their faith and trust in Jesus. But it's going to be a horrible day, horrific day for those who have rejected Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they're going to be judged for that. So the, the Day of Atonement. And then you have tabernacles where he's going to dwell among us, dwell with us for, I believe, during the millennial kingdom. Look, I believe that when you study the Feast of Trumpets and you study the, the rapture, one thing, I believe it's, it's plain as day that these, spring, or these fall feasts are going to be in order on the same day as, uh, you know, he's going to fulfill it on that day. 
as as he did the first uh, four, the fall feast. Um, and so when you look at the Feast of Trumpets in the resurrection and rapture, it makes sense. See, no man knows the day nor the hour. But at the same time, you have in this Feast of Trumpets, that's the brings in the new year. And what they do is, if I say this right, they they have a couple witnesses, and when they see the new sliver of the moon, when they see the new just a little bit of the moon, that begins the new year. And so there's a two-day window. So no man would know the day nor the hour in that case. So it where the Son of Man cometh. He could come and it fits perfectly on that feast because no man knows the day nor the hour. They don't know the day nor the hour that the new year is going to begin until they see the sliver of the moon. And when they see it, they blow the trumpet as long as they can. And it's a, a loud trumpet sound and everybody hears it. Just like the scripture says, every eye shall see him coming in the clouds in Revelations 1. Um, we're all going to see him. So I believe that the resurrection rapture will happen on a feast of trumpets. Will it happen this year? Could it happen this year um, on Feast of Trumpets? It, it, it's in a week or so, you know. Um, well, that depends on if you believe in a, a pre-trib rapture or not. And so you've got different opinions. You've got the pre-trib that they believe that the resurrection rapture will happen before Daniel's 70th week begins, that final seven-year period. Um, so if you believe in a pre-trib rapture, yes, it could happen this year. If you believe in a post-trib rapture, well, obviously no. If you believe in a pre-wrath rapture, obviously no. Um, you know, me personally, I believe the, the scripture, when it, I believe that the coming of the Lord is the coming of the Lord, the main event, the parousia, um, it's the main arrival. And when you study the concerning the coming of the Lord and our gathering unto him, when you, you read about that in the resurrection and rapture and in chapter four of first Thessalonians, you read about it and say all of Thessalonians is talking about the, the second coming, the, the, well, the coming of the Lord. It's all about the coming of the Lord. If you read in Thessalonians, you'll see in there, it's all about concerning the coming of the Lord and the rapture is part of that. And when you read in, you know, in the Gospels, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, the Son of Man, will, you'll see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. The coming. And that's the key word. When is the resurrection rapture? Well, it says the coming. At his, his coming and the coming is the same thing when you study that topic of the resurrection and rapture. And so I believe um, that the Bible's clear that it it's a pre, I believe in a pre-wrath rapture. I believe we'll be here during the tribulation period. Um, I, I believe we're going to see everything go down. I believe we're going to see the, the temple be rebuilt. I believe we're going to see those animal sacrifices begin to be made. I believe we're going to see the Antichrist stand in the temple of God and claim to be God. I believe we'll see the two witnesses. And so I believe that we're going to see all this go down. So for me, I believe the resurrection and rapture happens in the sixth year of the seven-year period. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, if you read in Revelations, the sixth seal, chapter six of Revelations, you see where the wrath of the Lamb begins. And it's in that sixth seal. And I believe, you know, I could be wrong. Everybody's got their opinions, but I believe those seals is like, you know, the beginning is seal one, seal two, seal three, seal four, seal five. I believe those could represent one year per seal. Um, you know, but just that's just my thought. There's many different opinions on it. And it seems like people get very angry if you don't agree in a pre-tribulation rapture. But I just don't see it. You know, when you really do a deep study on it, I think we'll be here and we're going to see things happen. So, 
bottom line is could we see the rapture happen this feast of trumpets or on a future feast of trumpets i definitely believe it will happen happen on a feast of trumpets um if you're pre-trib rapture if you believe in a pre-trib rapture yes it could happen but if you believe in a, a mid-trib or a post-trib or a pre-wrath no it won't happen but i do believe that the tribulation period will start on a feast of trumpets and i believe the rapture will happen six years into that final seven year period after immediately after the tribulation of those days but before the wrath of god is poured out see many people believe that final whole seven years is the wrath of god and i don't think the wrath of god begins until um the sixth year into the tribulation period they're at final seven year period so i hope that makes sense um look the bottom line is this we want to make sure we're right with god we want to make sure we're born again we've been you know that we have uh turned to god with all of our heart you know believe the gospel message that's been presented to you believe in the death burial and resurrection of jesus believe that he paid for your sin debt and fool and repent to God, according to Acts 20 and 21. This is what Paul taught. Repentance toward God and faith toward our, Lord, toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He taught that to the Jews and to the Greeks. That's the salvation plan for all humanity. Repent to God and place your faith and trust in Jesus. And trust in him with all of your heart. Trust in Jesus to take you to heaven. Trust in him to deliver you from the wrath to come. And trust in him to, um, you know take you into eternal glory it's all about his death burial and resurrection of 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 jesus um because of his death because of that blood sacrifice we can be forgiven of our sins and because of his resurrection we can live for him with him forever and god the father and all the beautiful people of god that place their faith and trust in jesus so i definitely be believe that the resurrection rapture will happen on feast of trumpets but i don't i believe that's going to happen um immediately after the tribulation of those days in that sixth year of that final seven year period that's what i believe so you know we've all got our own opinions and the good news is this uh our opinions on end time eschatology does not determine it's not a salvation issue so we shouldn't you know we still want to be kind and respectful as as believers in christ and followers of christ we want to um, be good representatives and so um loving one another uh by this shall they know that you are my disciples by the love you have one for another so let's pray one for another and share the gospel message with as many people as we can and just keep your faith and trust in jesus the scripture says in first john chapter five i believe it's verse three or four um and five um, this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith who is he that overcomes the world um, but he that believes that jesus is the son of god you can look that up it's i love that scripture um, it's all about our faith in jesus the just shall live by faith so god bless you um hope you all have a wonderful day god is good he's worthy to be praised love god with all your heart and love your neighbors as yourself and let's be watchful and let's be sober-minded because we know that the end of this age is approaching us very fastly and jesus is coming again so god bless you and have a wonderful day